Humans are remarkable beings capable of adapting to almost any condition. In the southern part of Thailand, there's a unique village named Koh Panyi, almost entirely built on stilts. We explore why several soccer fields were constructed there, how a Muslim village formed in a country where almost the entire population practices Buddhism, and why houses were built over water. Koh Panyi is located in the scenic Phang Nga Bay, between Phuket and the Krabi province. The village is situated near an island of the same name at the base of a limestone rock formation. The aerial view of this village inspired us to make this video. Its appearance is quite unusual, and its history is very interesting. It all started in the late 18th century. Several Malay families set out to find a better life. Different sources vary on their starting point. Some say they sailed from the island of Java, others from the area of the current Malaysian state of Kedah. The families agreed that whoever found a place with abundant fish would raise a flag for the others. Tubabu was the first to find such a place. It is believed that he and a few other families are the ancestors of most village residents. At that time, the law allowed only Thais to own land, so the resourceful fishermen found a solution. They began building settlements directly over the water. The first structures on land appeared only in the late 20th century as tourism in Thailand began to develop actively. The houses, made of wood and bamboo and standing on stilt-like legs reminiscent of flamingos, are not eternal, especially considering their constant contact with water. Naturally, locals must not forget about repairing buildings and the structures that support them, or else living there becomes simply unsafe. Currently, Koh Panyi has a population of about 1,700 people. Departure from the village is encouraged, as expanding it significantly is not feasible due to unfavorable natural conditions during the rainy season, which in Thailand lasts from mid-May to mid-October. It may seem strange, but one of the iconic landmarks of Koh Panyi village became a soccer field. This field is tied to a beautiful and inspiring story and it's surprising that no feature film has been made about it yet. However, there is a short film created with the support of Thailand's TMB Bank. The field was built in the second half of the 1980s, inspired by the enthusiasm of local boys following the 1986 FIFA World Cup. The determined children were not deterred by the fact that their entire village stood on stilts. They wanted to play soccer no matter what. The adults didn't believe in the little enthusiast project but the kids persisted and built a floating field after school, using whatever wood they could find, like fishing rafts. Of course, the field they constructed didn't meet any safety standards, but the young footballers didn't get discouraged. They viewed every obstacle as an opportunity to improve their ball control. One day, a poster about the Southern Thailand School Football Championship reached the village. The boys decided to participate, and the adults, now convinced of their serious intentions, helped them acquire uniforms. The Koh Panyi footballers reached the semi-finals. During the match, heavy rain poured, and they were trailing 2-0 at halftime. For the second half, the boys played barefoot, as they were more accustomed to running without shoes, and wet footwear was a hindrance. They managed to equalize the score, but the opponent clinched victory in the match's final minutes. The Kopanyi team regrouped and won the third place match. More importantly, they inspired the audience with their love for football and received incredible support. By 2011, Panyi FC had become one of the most successful youth football clubs in southern Thailand. The boys who built the field in 1986 were now grown men, providing immense motivation to the new generation. Due to the team's success and with sponsor support, a second, much safer soccer field was constructed. This story has inspired millions of people worldwide. For a long time, the residents of Koh Panyi lived primarily off fishing. By the end of the 20th century, the income from fishing was no longer sufficient, and a local postman suggested supplementing their earnings through tourism. His advice was heeded, and guests from different corners of the world began to visit the village. Consequently, Koh Panyi saw the emergence of small restaurants serving Thai and Western cuisine, as well as souvenir shops. While you won't find luxurious hotels here, you can stay in specially built bungalows for tourists. Besides amenities for visitors, 
The village has all the essentials for its permanent residents, including a school, a medical center, a market with goods brought from the mainland, electricity, internet, and a two-story mosque. The latter stands out prominently against the backdrop of other structures and can be easily spotted from the water. It is decorated inside with marble, thanks to donations. Notably, the mosque is not built on stilts. It's one of the first structures allowed to be built on the island. Since Kopanyi is predominantly Muslim, visitors are strongly advised not to bring cigarettes, alcohol, or pork to the island and to dress modestly. The Muslim majority in the village is due to the Malay origin of the first settlers, though overall, 95% of Thailand's population practices Buddhism. Both boys and girls attend the local Muslim school. The village's education is informal, so some young men attend more formal educational institutions, for example, in Phuket, located just 40 kilometers south. Village children are taught from a young age to respect nature. Along with their teachers, they collect cans and bottles, and the proceeds from recycling them go towards the development of the school. Additionally, boys and girls gain valuable theoretical and practical knowledge in agronomy. Together with their teachers, they grow vegetables using hydroponics, a system particularly suited for Kopanyi, as it allows for plant cultivation without soil. Tourists typically arrive in the village on long-tail boats, only brought during the dry season. Therefore, relying solely on income from tourists is not feasible. While the stilt settlement is just a stopover, often the main destination is the so-called James Bond Island. However, in Kopanyi, visitors are greeted by local guides who take pride in their village and are always eager to show its main attractions. Kopanyi is not the only overwater village in the world. If you're interested, we could release documentary films about other overwater villages. Let us know in the comments. There's a belief that floating cities are not just a story of the past, but also of the future. However, only time can confirm or refute this. At this point, we get to the end of our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and give this video a big thumbs up. We are curious to hear your opinion about this video in the comments.